Colorado mom Suzanne Morphew. Remains finally found identified this week, three years after she went missing. Her husband, Barry, original suspect, charged with first-degree murder, okay? He was on his way to trial nine days before the charges were dropped without prejudice, which to me is actually surprising when you hear the rest of this story. What does that mean? That means that they could bring charges based on new information that advance the case in a material way. But, 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 do you know the whole story? The answer is no, not behind the dropping of the charges. Key details. Now, the idea that the marriage was great, that's what the, the husband says. Suzanne's text tell a different story, okay? They show distress, that they were on the rocks, that she was claiming abuse, stalking, uh, all kinds of other stuff. But does that mean that he killed her? Okay, take a listen to this. Oh, Suzanne, if anyone is out there that can hear this, that has you, please, we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you, your girls need you. Ah, who else would do it? They were on the rocks. He changed his story. He gave a false impression of the relationship, but they dropped the charges. Why? I think that could be the key to our understanding to this point in the story. Defense attorney, Sarah Azari, Florida prosecutor, Dave Arenberg. Now, one of the um, upsides, and there aren't many, to having me as the anchor of a show is that I have a lot of friends. My superpower is drawing better people to me to help me do my job for you. One of them uh, is Sarah Azari. Sarah says, I see you're covering this case. You know, you gotta look down these roads also because it's not as simple as they just dropped the charges because they didn't have a body. Sarah. What are the missing pieces of understanding that you educated me about that bother you in terms of who did this, specifically the DNA uh, and its treatment and, and what it could mean and the behavior on the prosecution side? Yeah, Chris, so with the DNA, you know, we're, we're dealing with DNA in a marital home. It's a wash. You know, of course there's DNA. Uh, there was DNA on a syringe in the dryer, but that DNA was hers, not his. Um, there's phone and car data that might tell part of the story, but not the entire story. And then we have this motive that somehow they're, they're you know, they're married or she betrayed him. She was cheating on him. I mean, betrayal is not homicidal necessarily, and you don't need motive to uh, to prove murder. Um, and more importantly, we don't have a cause of death. So when we're talking about the prosecution's case here, they've sort of alluded to three, three theories, which is strangulation, um, being shot by a regular firearm, mm -hmm. or being be, being uh, killed by a dart. Um, and so, uh, tranquilizer dart. Um, strangulation requires the neck. Um, is it is it decomposed, or can we examine the neck now that we have the body? Um, what does that show? The scratches on his hands don't tell the full story. Um, again, with the weapons, he was an avid hunter. He was moving around, which was reflected on his phone activity, but he was shooting chipmunks, which is consistent with his with his hobby. You know, um, the dart thing. We just right. we just don't have enough evidence. So, uh, and Sarah saved a couple for me to come uh, to you with, Dave, as someone uh, looking at the prosecution side of this. If they found any suggestion of DNA of another man uh, in her vehicle or in any way oriented, and that that man, that DNA, had been connected to other cases, and they didn't turn it over. Right. I mean, that is very damning for the prosecution, no? Yeah, I, and I agree with Sarah that the problems with the case involve some sanctions against the prosecution for not turning over all the evidence. The fact that there was DNA of some other individual, not her lover and not her husband, but some third party who apparently had prior sex crimes. And it's a mixture, so it's not a clear match, but it's evidence that it could have been someone else. And it could have been an innocent explanation why that DNA was found in her car, but it doesn't help the prosecution. And when the prosecution dropped the case, they had said something to the effect of uh, there could be a body coming, like they were close to getting the body. And I think that's a big reason why they dropped it, because with the problems with the case, if they could find a cause of death, if they could get perhaps her husband's DNA under her fingernails or his blood on her, showing defensive wounds, there could be a better case for the prosecution. And they've got the body. And I think the body is going to tell 
a lot for the prosecutors, and that will determine whether they refile the charges against him. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.